In this video, we're going to be talking about two different methods that we can use to find the total area of a more complicated figure. What we can do is we can break up shapes into smaller shapes and then find their individual areas. We can add those areas together. That's called the area addition method. Or sometimes we can subtract the areas from each other, and that's called the subtraction method. So we'll talk about both. Before we do that, I just want to give you an example of where this is often used. Uh, sometimes this technique is used to come up with a formula that we've been using this whole time. So we know the area of a trapezoid is adding up the two bases and multiplying by the height and dividing by two. It's one way to do it. And the reason why is because it really comes from breaking up a trapezoid into a rectangle and a triangle. So I'm going to walk you through this and then we'll actually get into the area addition and subtraction methods. So if we take this trapezoid, on top and bottom are our parallel sides. Those are our bases. The perpendicular side to that would be the height. To find the area of our rectangle right now, it would just be this base, base 1, times the height. To find the area of this triangle, well, we need two sides here. We're going to do base times height divided by 2. We know our height. But to find this base length right here, we're actually going to subtract these two bases. We're going to take this length and subtract this length from it. So this length would actually be b2 minus b1. So if we multiply those two things together and divide by 2, this is the area of that triangle. Now if we add these two areas together, we get the area of the trapezoid. So let's try and get through that. In order to add these two expressions together, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this expression by 2 on top and bottom. So give the top and bottom a 2. And now we can combine the numerators and put it all over a denominator of 2. From there, we can see that this expression has a height or an h. And this expression also has a height or an h. So let's factor out that h from both of them. When we do that over here, it leaves behind 2 times the first base, or b1. Over here, that leaves behind b2 minus b1. Now we can combine some like terms. I have two base 1s. And if I subtract one of those base 1s, I'm left with one base 1. So now we're left with one base 1 and a base 2 times our height divided by 2. And there's the area of the trapezoid which was created by breaking up that trapezoid into a rectangle and a triangle. So that's the basic idea behind uh, area addition. Let's do another one of those, a little bit more complicated. This time we want to find the area of this shape. So let's think about what tinier shapes we can break it up into. We can create a semicircle over here on the left, a rectangle somewhere in the middle here, and a triangle on the right. If we find the individual areas of the triangle, rectangle, and semicircle, then we can find the entire area of that figure. A second way that we could do it is create a semicircle on the left and then talk about the trapezoid that's on the right, so only using two shapes. Hopefully both methods give us the exact same answer. Let's see what happens. Let's find the area of the rectangle. We already have this length, 9. And we have a height of 6. Well, how do we find that height? Well, here we have a length of 15. And here we had a length of 9. If we subtract those two, if I subtract the 9 from the 15, that'll give me this leftover length right here, which is 6. If I know that this is a 45 degree angle, that makes this right triangle here an isosceles right triangle, where the legs are the equal lengths. So if this length is 6, this length has to be 6. So now we know our height is 6. So we can find the area of the rectangle. It's just base times height, or 9 times 6, which is 54. We also have enough information now to find the area of the triangle. Base times height divided by 2. So we can do 6 times 6 divided by 2, which gives us an area of 18. To find the area of the semicircle, we know that its diameter here is 6, so let's find its radius. Just cut that in half. The radius is 3. 
Now that we have our radius, we can find the area of the semicircle. We're gonna find the area of the circle and cut it in half. So the area of the circle would be the radius squared times pi or three squared times pi. So the area of the full circle would be nine pi. We want half of that circle, so we want nine halves pi or in its decimal form, we could say it's about 14.13. So now we have all the individual areas. If I combine my rectangle and triangle areas, 54 plus 18 give me 72. If I tack on the semicircle area, just add that to it, then we get an area that's approximately 86.13. We also said that we could have just used the semicircle and trapezoid. So let's find the area of this trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is the median times the height. So if we add our bases and divide by two, we get the median. Average your bases. Nine plus 15 is 24. Divide that in two and we get a median length of 12. If I do that times my height, 12 times six is 72. Same exact area that we got by combining the rectangle and triangle areas. And we know that if we combine that with our semicircle area, we get the total area of the figure. So there's not just one way to do it. If you can break up shapes into multiple smaller shapes, you kind of have a choice how many shapes you want to do. Let's talk about the subtraction method. This is used when you're asked for questions like find the area of a shaded region. So the shaded region of the circle would be the area of this big circle minus the area of the smaller circle if I just take that out. So if we find the area of the big circle and find the area of the small circle and subtract them, we get this leftover shaded area. Well, we're told that the diameter of the big circle is 10 feet, so the radius must be half of that, 5 feet. So that makes the area of the big circle 5 squared times pi, the radius squared times pi, which is 25 pi. We're given the radius of the small circle is 2 feet. So the area of the small circle must be 2 squared times pi, the radius squared times pi, which is 4 pi. Since I have like terms, I could subtract these two terms. 25 pi minus 4 pi is 21 pi, and that is the area of the shaded region. And we could use that in its pi form, or we could convert that to its decimal form and round to approximately 65.94 feet squared. So there's an idea of how to use the subtraction method and the addition method to combine areas and find the total area of a more complicated figure.